Hey everyone, I just wanted to come on here real quick and share a few opinions on some things that happened in the drama community in the last few weeks or few months, I guess. And I wanted to apologize ahead of time because when I did my channel update last week, I said I was going to be dropping it that this video that night. However, real life happens and also I think I made this video about two different times and deleted it because I'm going to address a really sensitive subject and it's just hard for me to talk about. I also wanted to give a trigger warning because I will be speaking on sensitive subjects such as sexual assault and if things like that trigger you, please click out of this video and watch something else. Like I said, this video is for the drama community and if you happen to be from another community I chat in, I'm going to give a little bit of a summary of events of what happened and try to break it down and try to make it make sense. However, if you're from the drama community, you probably already know all this and you could probably fast forward through it. but. Anyhow, maybe I'll put a timestamp in the comments, who knows. Anyhow, let's get on with the summary. In late February or early March, around that time before the lockdown COVID thing happened, a lady in the drama community that goes by the name of Kit Kat had her rape court documents doxxed. I want to say something really quick and then I'll get back to the summary. Kit Kat happens to be my friend. However, if she was not my friend, if she was my worst enemy online or, you know, however much of an enemy I could have online, I would be equally as appalled. This should happen to no one. Okay, back to the summary. So the the way we find out about these court documents being doxxed is by a lady named Corey. There's going to be four other ladies I mention in this video besides Kit Kat. Their names are Corey, Witty, Uni, and Embry. Kit Kat and myself and most of our other friends are not friends with any of these ladies. A few of the, a couple of these ladies we were friends with at one time, but certain falling outs happened. And, um, pretty much not friends with them for different reasons. So Corey is friends with Uni, Embry, and Witty, and she finds out that Embry got these documents somehow or got a link to these documents somehow. And passed it to Uni and DMs. So then Uni shares it with Corey. And Corey doesn't like the idea of them having these documents. Or having access to these documents. So she reaches out to Kit Kat right away. Kit Kat's not friends with Corey. I'm not friends with Corey. Most of the people I'm friends with are not friends with Corey. However, we do appreciate and respect the fact that she did the right thing. Embry's excuse for giving Uni the link to these documents. Was because Uni had once asked her if she had Kit Kat's information because at one time Embry and Kit Kat were friends. So she asked Embry if, you know, do you have Kit Kat's address or phone number or whatever she asked her. Uni was also inquiring in another community about Kit Kat's information. And Uni's excuse for asking about this information was because she was supposedly in fear for her life. And the reason she was in fear for her life is because her and Kit Kat were once friends. Okay. But... As of recently, they're not friends. They were arguing in a live chat, and Kit Kat said, I'm coming for you, bitch. So, Uni supposedly took that in a literal sense. We all know that's bullshit, but it's her story, and she's sticking to it, I guess. I think it's important that I give a little rundown of Kit Kat's history, and also kind of go over some of the, I guess, do's and don'ts of the drama community to add a little context to the situation. The drama community consists of mostly women. I would say about 95% of the community is women. It can be a really toxic place. It's really normal to talk shit to each other. Like, I kind of just wanted to get that point across that Kit Kat's comment to Uni was very normal. Very run-of-the-mill. People say it all the time. And it's not taken like, you know, oh, you're going to come into my real life. Now, Kit Kat's history... In the community, the the community's been ex existing for about four years, and Kit Kat's been here since the beginning. She's never once docked somebody. She's never once called CPS on somebody. Never called the cops and swatted somebody. She's had falling outs with friends and never exposed DMs or you know secrets about them. Which uh, there's a lot of people in the community that do that. You know, you could say a lot of things about Kit Kat. But you can't say that about her. And, you know, she might hurt your feelings in the chat. She might piss you off and hurt your feelings. 
but she's not going to go for your real life. She's never once done it. She doesn't get down like that, and you need damn well knew that. Now I want to talk about how Witty came into the situation. Witty gets wind of what's going on, and she requests to see the documents. I guess they gave her the link to the documents. She went over them. I guess she was appalled, and she looked into the case and got the attacker's name and reached out to the attacker's family. It's important that I add that Kit Kat's attacker was murdered in prison, you know, for being a total piece of shit sex offender rapist. Anyhow, Witty has a live stream threatening that she's going to have the attacker's family on panel, that Kit Kat is a murderer, she put away an innocent man, and he was murdered in prison on her behalf, and, you know, his family needs to come on panel because this innocent man needs a voice. Can you imagine what a rape survivor would go through having to relive all of this bullshit. As Witty's going over certain details of the case, she's totally manipulating them. And, and some things she said were just straight up lies. I'm not going to go over it again because I don't think my friend should have to relive that. But it's important that you guys know that this went on for weeks. Witty never ended up getting the family on panel, thank God. And she finally stopped streaming about it after the COVID lockdown thing happened. Before I move on to what's currently going on, I felt it was important to let everyone know that doesn't know that Kit Kat is not the only person Woody has harassed. There is a woman in our community that she doxxed. She's married, she has a toddler child, and she has an adult child. She, she spread all kinds of lies about her adult child, and then she went on to find out her husband's name. I guess he has a common name or something. And then she found a sex offender with the same name as her husband, who happens to be like 20 years older than her husband, but that doesn't matter because facts don't matter. Anyhow, so she tells everybody in the community that this lady's married to a sex offender and that her toddler is in grave danger and that everybody should call CPS. Just And just says other wretched things too. Then there was a younger gentleman from our community. He's a dad. He has two kids. He has a job. He's in his 20s. He's Mexican-American. So with him being Mexican-American... She decided to have a quote-unquote deportation stream. She claims that he admitted to her that he's not a citizen of the United States, which is total bullshit, and we all know it. But once again, facts don't matter. In this live stream, her moderators were putting the 1-800 number to ICE in the chat. And they were also doxing another innocent man who has nothing to do with this community. He just happened to have the same first name and live in the same state as the gentleman in our community. They thought that they had doxxed him, but they hadn't. So they were trying to get his house swatted by ICE. Yeah. Trying to get a guy's house swatted by Immigration Customs Enforcement. That's cute. And not racist at all, I might add. Yeah, that's not racist at all. <laughs> okay. Then there was another lady in the community who I was once at odds with. I'm now friends with. She was once a moderator for Witty. Her and Witty had a falling out. She's a single mom. She has a seven-year-old special needs daughter. And so after the falling out, Witty had these live streams saying that everybody should call CPS on her. Talking about what a horrible mother she is and all this bullshit. And these aren't the only people. This is just barely the tip of the iceberg. Moving forward to what's been happening in the last two weeks or so. In the last two weeks, Corey's went back to hating Kit Kat, just out of the blue one day, fuck you Kit Kat. Um, didn't say that Kit Kat deserved what Witty did to her, but kind of said something to the effect of what did you expect Witty to do after you were so vile to her, and made up this lie, and I don't know why she keeps saying this because it's not true, that Kit Kat, myself, and others made fun of Witty because she's a widow. And we made fun of her husband for dying of cancer. That never, ever, ever, ever happened. Then while all that was going on, Witty was having live streams, you know, asking for forgiveness and saying she doesn't want to do vile things anymore. And all the things she did in the past anyways was all trolling and jokes and, and whatever. Come on now. She didn't say that what she said about Kit Kat's rape case was trolling and jokes, though. I have not heard her say that yet. But if she was joking and trolling about that, it's just as bad. It doesn't even matter. Then there was a mutual friend of ours who wanted to do a mental health stream and have Corey on panel and have Corey kind of tell her story and whatever. And Kit Kat got her feelings hurt. And our mutual friend and Kit Kat 
had gotten in an argument publicly. I think they have since found peace. I'm not sure. However, there were people that reacted to this argument, and that is kind of what my point of this video was. So we got Witty on her panel saying that, you know, she's a good person now and she doesn't want to do vile things anymore. And there were some ladies, like one lady jumped on her panel with her and, you know, telling her how great she's doing. And there were some ladies in the chat, too, that were mutual friends of me and Kit Kats that were in the chat talking about, you know, how much emotional growth that Witty has had and, you know, what a better person she is for doing all this. But see, the thing is with Witty is this is wash, rinse, repeat. She will do vile things, say sorry, then go right back to doing the same exact things. So we got all that going on with Witty over there with some mutual friends, like, you know, complimenting her. And then we got a mutual friend trying to get Corey on panel and Kit Kat and that mutual friend got in a public argument. And then, okay, so we're, we're getting down to the people that reacted to all of this. A lot of people reacted to all of this and some made live streams some just, you know, commented on those live streams or in the chats or commented on Twitter, you know, reacting to this whole thing. And I felt like a lot of people were being somewhat dismissive of what happened to Kit Kat. I don't think that they were trying to hurt Kit Kat, but just maybe not coming from a place of understanding. Some people in the community were comparing it to things that they have had said to them in the community, like putting it on a level of forgiveness like it needs to just kind of be forgotten, forgiven, and let's move on, which I agree that we do need to move on from it. However, I don't think it should be forgotten. I don't feel like saying vile and, and mean things is the same thing as doing mean and vile things like doxing rape court documents, for example. So I guess I made this video to kind of explain why I've been a little standoffish in the community and kind of try to help people understand where Kit Kat was coming from and then also for the people that are making friends with Witty and some of those people, just be careful. I mean, like I said, this has been a... This has been something that's happened before and she's come back and said sorry and, you know, just each time it gets worse. That's all I'm saying. I also wanted to give a shout out to Zigzag, Ziggy. She is Kit Kat's best friend. Wherever Kit Kat is, Ziggy is not far behind. She is a solid friend. She's a good person. She was, this was very upsetting to her too, but she was a rock through this. Like, she's a good person, a good friend. Anyways, y'all, I'm gonna get on to making my prison community video about Big Lance off the yard and I was thinking about with all the crazy stuff that's been going on in the world I might make a video addressing some of that who knows and then I'll get on to my chosen one part two so anyways hope you like the video love y'all